responsable. Hier, le ministre des Finances a tenté de blâmer les fonctionnaires pour ses actions. Un premier ministre ne peut pas accepter ça. Alors, va-t-il se lever et condamner cette action douteuse? Est-ce qu'il va donner les conséquences sérieuses au, à cette ministre? Quand est-ce qu'il va agir? Euh, le très honorable premier ministre. Le président, le ministre des Finances... Euh accepter la responsabilité pour l'erreur. En même temps, c'est clair que les fonds ont, utilisé, ont bien utilisé pour, euh, pour leur objectif. Et Monsieur le Président, le ministre des Finances s'est se, se se engagé à ne pas répéter cette erreur. Honorable member for Toronto, Danforth. I recall the Prime Minister used stronger language when he was on the opposition benches when we used to see this kind of thing from the Liberals. You know, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the finance uh, uh, minister has broken the rules. He hired a friend of the Conservative Party to write a speech for $122,000. $2,000 a day, $22 a word. Cold comfort for the people who are being thrown out of work across this country in forestry and manufacturing. So the Prime Minister now refuses to punish the minister for breaking the rules. So my question is to the finance minister then. Is his friend getting the contract for the 2008 budget? <laughs> if... Uh, and basically, no, no, no favors were exchanged. But the Liberals aren't buying it. The facts are that Dimitri Soudas, a spokesman for the Prime Minister, intervened on a government file. He ordered senior ministerial staffers, including a chief of staff, to attend meetings designed to influence a $50 million deal. And he did this to help a land developer that a party fundraiser described as, quote, someone who is powerful, who is important for conservative votes and money. Let's summarize this latest scandal the Liberals have dug up. No favors were handed out. Mr. Speaker, members of the Manitoba Legislature, welcome to the second session of the 39th Legislative Assembly of the Province of Manitoba. In addition, Manitoba has been working with the Canadian government and state governments in the U.S. to protect and enhance our access to key trade markets. In response to U.S. border security measures, Manitoba will begin offering an enhanced driver's license as an affordable and secure form of identification for travelers. The new license will be available in the fall of 2008. Manitoba is also taking a major role in the development of a mid-continent trade corridor, connecting our northern port of Churchill with trade markets throughout the central U.S. and Mexico. To advance the concept, an alliance has been built with business leaders and state and city governments spanning the entire length of the corridor. When fully developed, the trade route will incorporate an inland port in Winnipeg with pre-clearance for international shipping. Thank you. As uh, you three leaders meet here, there are a growing number of people in each of your countries who have expressed concern about the Security and Prosperity Partnership. This is addressed to all three of you. Can you say today that this is not a prelude to a North American Union, similar to a European Union? Uh, are there plans to build some kind of superhighway connecting all three countries? And do you believe all of these theories about a possible erosion of national identity stem from a lack of transparency from this partnership? Thank you for... Well, let me begin. I, uh, and I guess I've read some things from my opposition in Canada. I'm not sure these are generally expressed concerns, but a couple of my opposition leaders have speculated on massive water diversions and uh, uh, superhighways to the continent, maybe interplanetary, I'm not sure as well. Um, and I, I'm amused by some of the some of the speculation, uh, some of the old, uh, you call them political scare tactics. If you've been in politics as long as I have, you get used to that kind of technique where you lay out a conspiracy and then force people to try to prove it doesn't exist. And that's just the way some people operate. And uh, so I appreciate that question. I'm, I th I th I'm amused 
by the difference between what actually takes place in the meetings and what some are trying to you know, say takes place. It's, a, it's quite comical, actually, when you realize the difference between reality and what some people are talking on TV about. Manitoba is also taking a major role in the development of a mid-continent trade corridor. Maybe interplanetary, I'm not sure. Connecting our northern port of Churchill with trade markets throughout the central U.S. and Mexico. The speculation. An alliance has been built with business leaders and state and city governments spanning the entire length of the corridor. Conspiracy. When fully developed, the trade route will incorporate an inland port in Winnipeg with pre-clearance for international shipping. Maybe interplanetary, I'm not sure. Conspiracy. Maybe interplanetary, I'm not sure. It's quite comical, actually, when you realize the difference between reality and what some people are talking on TV about. Reality, reality, and what some people are talking on TV about. The United States um, is a force for good. The opposition booed the Prime Minister Order. and demanded an apology, accusing him of insulting the entire Greek community. The stand in this house is what I demand and apologize publicly to each and every Greek Canadian. Harper was defending a senior advisor and another longtime party supporter, both being accused by opposition parties of political interference when he raised their Greek heritage. The Bloc MP mentioned the name of two people who are of Greek origin. One is an employee here in Ottawa, another one is a Conservative Party uh, supporter in Montreal. The fact uh, that uh, there are two Montreal men who have Greek origins uh, is not uh, a plot. Harper's Deputy Press Secretary and advisor on Quebec issues is accused of intervening in a dispute between a Montreal developer and the government over management of two federal buildings in the national capital region. Sudas insists he did nothing wrong. I mean, ultimately, uh, a request was made on a specific file uh, for those who choose to serve the public uh, in, uh, in uh, the spirit of transparency, looking into a file is, is, uh, is, is, is makes common sense. Uh, the file was looked into. Uh, as you may have noticed, the issue was before the courts at the time. It remains before the courts today. Uh, and basically, no, no, no favors were exchanged. And but the Liberals aren't buying it. The facts are that Dimitri Soudas, a spokesman for the Prime Minister, intervened on a government file. He ordered senior ministerial staffers, including a chief of staff, to attend meetings designed to influence a $50 million deal. And he did this to help a land developer that a party fundraiser described as, quote, someone who is powerful, who is important for conservative votes and money. Let's summarize this latest scandal the Liberals have dug up. No favors were handed out. Comment. And uh, suggesting any kind of a, such an, 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 a link uh, is insulting. Uh, I represent a Greek town in Toronto, uh, and I find uh, that kind of an approach to, uh, to uh, dealing with such questions uh, completely inappropriate on the part of the Prime Minister. There's no link be between the fact those people are from Greek origins, N nothing, Greek roots, not at all. Was his suggestion racist? I think that was a kind, yes, that was a kind of uh, suggestion he was making. There are weak, they're unraveling in a heap, and they're resting squarely at the Prime Minister's feet. It is clear Mr. Sud has tried to exert pressure over public works officials. They were being lobbied. Um, well, I think, um, having spoken to, to friends and family that also voted for this government, they're, uh, they're very disappointed um, by, by promises that were made that weren't kept, uh, changes that were supposed to happen and didn't. And um, and I think that this country definitely needs to move back to what it used to be, and uh, it's definitely not the whole. <laughs> Why? 
because I think uh, I'm not allowed to say what I think of Harper <laughs> on TV. <laughs> Well, I mean, but no, I think that um, we've taken a turn for the worse, and Canada used to be known for peacekeeping, and we're not anymore, unfortunately. We're just as bad as our friends down under. Like, not helping. So that's my opinion.